Hello fellow humans and welcome to another episode of your replays. Do you want to post your replays? Put them on my Discord server and then you might be featured in one of my videos. Now we do the impossible in the Lurvit today. It's a very old tank but it still holds up quite well. It's got very good penetration, decent alpha damage, the DPM fine. It's got an excellent accuracy, 8 degrees of gun depression which is about good enough. Its speed is no, but it does have 185 percent credit coefficient which is still very strong and it is often sold in a bundle with 5.5k gold so it's pretty solid like you get a 30 days of premium 500,000 creds the Lerve fully equipped and some weird extra add-ons that don't mean anything for 5.5k so those bundles are truly excellent now there is one currently if you watch the video and release uh, with the 111 which you shouldn't buy it's the 111 didn't really hold up in the times. Now, Lerve does still have a pretty big advantage. The standard penetration is 234, which is really good, right? You've got 8 degrees of gun depression, so you can play hull down, sort of. You can still get penned, obviously, because, I mean, it's it weighs 90 tons, but it's not universally protected. I mean, no tank is. Any tank can be killed with sufficient firepower or a skill, so that's not really it. Now, in a situation like this, you gotta watch out what the team is doing. Now, in this case, we have two non-combatants here. We have a medium tank and the heavy tank camping at the back of the map. So you might as well just dis disregard those kind of people, right? That's what I always do. Like, in a situation like this, I always assume they don't exist, right? And there's a shot from the back. Like, I always assume that they don't exist because they're not likely to really have an impact. If you... And that might not that that might not be the greatest idea like playing like this just staying out in the open in front of a auto loading pantera that is also i don't know what he's doing but uh is this this replay seems a bit buggy to me but let's hope it isn't now i always disregard those kind of players because then you get into a different mindset of oh it's 5v3 no it's 3v3 because two of your guys aren't doing anything so you're in a completely different mindset of Oh, this is an easy win. Instead, it's a, uh, hmm, I maybe gotta try to, to actually do something here. Which, uh, helps. So, just pretend they don't exist because they're probably not gonna have any impact anyway. It's the easiest way. Like, you can't make them useful by screaming at them. That's never gonna work. But you can adapt yourself so that you, you simply don't need them. But you can use them, right? To, to your advantage. What I do pretty much all the time when I see, okay, this team's bad, they're gonna lose, I go behind them. Because then, either we're gonna lose anyway, or I can make their hit points useful to gain an advantage back. Right? Because if they don't wanna be useful themselves, I'm gonna make them useful as extra hit points for myself. Now, that doesn't obviously work with everyone, because if everyone does that, everyone's camping. Duh. That's not good. You gotta ideally always go forward. That's only a, a tactic of last resort when you have to. That's not something you should do. But it works sometimes. Now, in this case, 3,400 damage already. Great performance so far. But the cap is at 75. Now it gets reset because the object's somehow peeking out sideways. That, that's a thing that I highly recommend against. Uh, peeking out sideways is, is pretty much always a bad idea. I mean, I do it all the time, really. Because I know I can peek faster than they can shoot, but especially if you're like a mobile player and you can't do that as well, I highly recommend actually angling around the corner so that you're not going to get shot when you peek. Because if I peek in like a leopard one, by the time the guy reacts, I'm already gone again. But if you're in a heavy tank, you don't want to peek sideways because you're never going to get back into cover. And now it is a 1v2 on 120 hit points. And the title of the video, kind of already spoil it, we're gonna do the impossible. The Black Eagle is gonna fly and soar to the sky with a performance that is insane. But now for the next couple of seconds, nothing's gonna happen, so time machine time. And now we're here. That was close. Very close. So now 120 HP versus 1300 HP. It's an object to have to you. It's a really good tank, right? But there is a problem that that player has, um, and that is that he's facing a very good Lerbe player and he just gets unlucky and he hits the track. Like this right here, that was just unlucky. Now, that's something you also want to have and want to consider. 
that sometimes luck is also part of your skill. That when you perform really well, you're also getting lucky. And it's not just you. That's something you have to consider as well and, and figure in. But now, we're having a standoff, but the object's slow. And 120 stays at 72, and he loses 1,300 hit points. Because he's smarter and faster, better. So, learn your spots. Don't peek out sideways. And get faster. Like, that is literally one of the easiest things... It takes a lot of practice, obviously, but that is literally one of the easiest things to do. You don't have to do any thinking. You just have to peek faster. And then you do a lot better. But here's the, the problem was, of that 2 of you, that he had 400 battles. So, anyway. Now, we play a different kind of heavy tank. This thing, which is as much of a tank destroyer as the T-30. The SMV CC-64, a Italian <clears throat> tank, tank destroyer, but... In the first two minutes, nothing happens, so let's go straight into the action. Now, it does have 3,000 DPM, 400 alpha damage. The accuracy is not as good as that of the Lurvip, but it's quite a bit faster. Obviously, it's a standard tank, so it doesn't have a great credit coefficient, because the Lurvip just prints credits, this one doesn't. But it is a DPM machine. It can't traverse the turret fully, but it's good enough to get the job done. Done is this guy as well. Ouchie. That is very unlucky for him, because Byrazers of the Nuts clan, my own clan, which, if you are looking for an excellent clan on the EU server, feel free to join if you're a good player. Nuts is cool. Um, but anyway, here we have a standard type farm game where the enemy players are pretty much on the bad side of the map and aren't utilizing it. Because here's the thing, if you go to the bad side of the map, you might as well win from there if you are utilizing it correctly while the enemy team doesn't utilize their side, right? The problem is, if you stay on that particular side of the map, which is most often the heavy side, and if you just simply stay there and sit, you're probably not gonna win unless the enemy hard throws. Which isn't the case in this situation. So you don't want to do that. You always want to take control of the end result, right? You don't want to be at the end of the guy at, at the end of the time. You don't want to be the guy that has to rely on others to get the things done. Help is always great. And if you can get it, you should absolutely take it. But unfortunately, you can't expect it. And now it's a tiger. And he doesn't have a camo, which is great sign of quality. I mean, here's the thing. Player underscore, clanless, camoless, T55A players, T54E1 players, rank 50 players tend to be not as good as the average other player. Keep that in mind. That's just my experience. Um, so, let's go. 4k damage, 5 kills in the SMVCC. Great game. Hope you picked up something. Because it is pretty damn good. Thank you for watching. And see you for the next one. Learn to peak faster. Literally. It, it's going to save you a lot. Bye.